Oh God, you're going to learn another embarrassing fact about how I live my life. But look, I'm just going to say, if I want to gain weight during the winter, I'm allowed to gain weight during the winter. We all do it, don't deny it. I really do like chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets is like my family. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Teach with Tyg, and I try and teach you science by using pop culture references that make you go, wait, am I enjoying learning now? What? So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, make sure to hit that subscribe button. My aim is to bring out a new video every week, so if you're sitting your exams in 2024, I might actually have the course finished for you. In today's topic, we're looking at isotopes, and if you hang around to the end, I'll give you a bonus tip for your exams. Now in a previous video, I told you that protons and neutrons existed inside the nucleus of an atom, and that electrons were on the outside. I also mentioned that protons and electrons had to be equal in number, but that the number of neutrons didn't have to be the same as the number of protons and electrons. If you want to look back at any of my previous content on the atom there's a link on screen now now the interesting thing with isotopes is that that number of neutrons inside in an element can actually change we could have different variations of the same element with different numbers of neutrons now people get confused about isotopes all the time but really the only key difference is that the mass is changing and that's because the number of neutrons is different in the different variations of that element but at the end of the day it's still the same element and that's because the number of protons has not changed think of it like people during the year. They tend to gain weight towards the winter and they tend to lose weight towards the summertime. But at the end of the day, they're still the same person. Here's an example. This is me during the summer. How do I know? Look at this dude. Now let's check out my mass during the summertime. So, what's your mass? 85. So 85 kgs during the summer. Now here's me during the winter time. You can tell I go home at Christmas. Mum's a feeder. What can I say? Mom's spaghetti. Mom's spaghetti. So, what mass am I during the winter? 95. 95, not bad. Thank you. See you next year. So if we take those two masses, 85 and 95, how do I find out the average mass that I weigh during the year? Well, it's pretty simple. I add the 85 and 95 together, and then I divide by the number of me that was there, so two, which gives me 90. So my average mass is 90 kgs. Let's try another example. Imagine I had a thousand different balls with four different weights that they could potentially be. They could be either five grams, six grams, seven grams, or eight grams. If I wanted to find the average mass of a ball inside in that group then I need to know the percentages present of each of those different masses so let's take this table as an example 12% of the balls weigh 5 grams 28% of the balls weigh 6 grams 29% of the balls weigh 7 grams and 31% weigh 8 grams let's try and calculate the average mass of the balls So, we start by multiplying the percentage by the mass. So for the first one, we get 12 times 5 is equal to 60. 28 times 6 is 168. 29 times 7 is 203. And 31 times 8 is 248. Next, we add all those numbers together, and that gives us 679. Now, we had 100%, so we have to divide by 100. So 679 divided by 100 gives us 6.79, and that's the average mass of one of the balls. Now, if we did the same with elements, that helps us get the relative atomic mass for each of those elements. All we have to do is take the mass of the isotope and multiply it by the percentage of its abundance. The abundance of an isotope just tells you how much of it exists in nature. Okay, finally, let's try an example with an actual isotope. So 70% of all copper atoms are copper 63 while 30% of copper atoms are copper 65. Let's try and figure out what the relative atomic mass is for copper. This should be nice and straightforward and is exactly like what we'd get in the exam. Why is this so much fun? So 70 times 63 is 4,410, and 30 times 65 is 1,950. We add those two numbers together to get 6,360, and then we divide by 100 because it was 100%. That gives us a relative atomic mass of 63.6. Now you'll notice on the periodic table that copper is actually wrote down as 63.5 instead of 63.6, and that's because the reality is actually somewhere in between, but 0.5 is easier to deal with. So 
we're actually doing you a favor. You're welcome. If that doesn't keep kids in school, what will? So that was a nice short one today, but here's a bonus for sticking around. In the exam, they tend to pick the same isotopes over and over again. The ones they like to use the most are carbon, chlorine, and copper. So it's worth practicing some questions with those different isotopes. Now that doesn't mean that there won't be other isotopes there, but those ones seem to be the ones they favor the most. Oh great! You know what that is? Do you know what that is? Great. If you found that useful, please hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing. That way you can get notified for when I bring out new videos. And hopefully that means I can help you pass your exams, which at the end of the day is all we want to do. So let's pass them GCSEs.